The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Exolix, a privacy-focused, non-custodial, instant crypto exchange. Go to exolix.com to enjoy secure and completely anonymous swaps with no KYC or sign-up. Swap between Monero and 2,000 plus assets at the most competitive rates and with no limits. Exolix.com, your fast and secure way to privacy. Uh, hey, good morning, guys. Right. Good, morning. Buddy. good morning. Good morning, GM, GM. <laughs> oh, man, I'm, I'm seeing my price target. It feels so far away now. It felt, it felt so close like a week or so ago. Now it feels yeah. so far away. Well, I mean, you know. Uh, it's weird, actually. The rest, the rest of the crypto market was kind of pumping this week, and we took a big pullback. <laughs> what the fuck? Unbelievable, right? Like Monero, Monero is more popular, known than ever. Uh, entire market goes up, and Monero. It's goes giving back. us time to buy. So I see this happen. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I feel like I anecdotally see this happen a lot, where the market pumps. Monero kind of sits back and then like a few days, a week later, then Monero seems to like also yeah. pump. Yeah, I've noticed yeah, it seems that to too. pump when nothing else moves, right? Yeah, when nothing else It's giving moves. you time to buy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you've we've had giving us a long time, time to buy. <laughs> we've had these dips that have been happening and look like it's another one, right? If you're if you're trying to refill some bags, if you've been spending Monero, you need to top up those bags. Hey, it's a good time to do it. True, true. Although I always feel like I always feel like a maxi when I'm like, that's good. Now I can just buy more. It's like, okay. Like I if know. the price pumps, it's like, ha, I told you so. And then if it dips, they're like, oh, well, you know, weak hands, bro. You just got weak hands and I'm going to buy more now. Ha ha. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> total, total cope. But it is true, man. I mean, that that's my mindset, right? Just, just build, earn, build it. Like you're, you're watching. I just use it. You're watching the utility of it grow. So if you're if you're focused on that, you're excited and you feel like you're winning, right? If if we if we were looking at this and like you know ah oh, nobody's using Monero, you know ah oh, the f dark markets are not using Monero, and you know that 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 would be tragic days. Uh, but it's the opposite. More and more people you know, go on XMR. XMR Bazaar is is getting is getting some traction. It's getting some traction like that. That is exciting to me. Obviously, I mean, we want the price to go up. But when, when you're focused on that element, it the chart just looks like it's been, you know, going up and up and up and up. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe 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 I'm maybe I'm just like or misinterpreting that. I wish we had some some better stats on that. It just feels anecdotally that uh there's more and more adoption happening. Obviously, XMR it, Bazaar is showing that. It feels that way. Um I, we don't see it too reflected in the transaction counts. Like lately okay, yeah. we saw a bump up above thirty thousand, thirty-five. We're kind of headed back down now. Maybe that's a price thing where <laughs> I don't know, some people got some gains, everyone was buying Monero during the downtimes, and now people are taking profits. Maybe it's off lot. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's incredible that the the actual usage hasn't kicked into the point yet where it's reflected more in the trend. It feels like if right, it feels like like transaction count is more affected by like price than usage for what we feel is like genuine usage. Like it, we we haven't grown to that point yet. I feel like where the genuine usage of people sending peer to peer transactions is starting to really boost the transaction count if that makes I sense. mean I think it's undeniable the amount of speculators and investors in the crypto industry is like vastly outweighs the amount of people that actually <laughs> right. use it regardless of whatever coin it is so yeah so there'll yeah. be that day I guess we won't know when it happens but where actual like real transactions become a higher percentage of, of the network than speculators yeah I mean it, uh, ideally we should see these transaction counts slowly climb over time as more and more people adopt it, more and more people start using it for payments, even if it's just gift cards, right? What we want to see is people, well, we want to see, <clears throat> we want to see new adoption, but we also want to see the rest of the crypto market for their gift cards and all that other stuff, Travala, et cetera, transition into Monero just because like, hey, why not? Like, why wouldn't you have privacy? Look at what everything the government is doing is like, it's slapping you in the face here. For the past like six months for the past year about all the kinds of crazy stuff they're doing so it's like why wouldn't you just use monero you don't have to think about the privacy it's basically right. better than everything else out there but um 
so far, like it, we have, we just haven't seen that reflected to a great extent in our transaction counts. Um, you know, maybe it's just the long game, right? Maybe just, we just have to keep doing this for the next few years. XMRchats.com, like we were saying, like I'm saying, oh, imagine if we got a, you know, a thousand super chats per show, right? Like, all right, that might be a little far fetched. But what isn't is if, you know, large podcasters with large followings start moving over to, you know, we maybe we get that first like libertarian podcaster who's a little, little bit not, you know, on the, on the not normie edge and who's like, oh, I'm going to try out XMR chat. If you get enough of those, I mean, get it getting a thousand transactions per day just via XMR chat alone is conceivable in my mind. That would be amazing. Like it would also be really cool because you'd be able to tell us what percentage of the total transactions were from XMR chat, right? We would, that that's a statistic we would be able to track. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Alrighty. I just wanted to comment enough on your co old... enough cope. Tell us, tell us, tell us the price. <laughs> I just wanted to comment on Tux's old school podcasting studio. This is the kind of podcasting studio your grandparents used back in the day. Thank All you. Right. Yes, it's very nice. It is actually pretty cool. Yeah, it looks cool. Okay, so um, yeah, we've got the Monero chart sitting in front of us here. We got it back. I, I think we even talked about. We said, hey, you know. There could be nefarious entities still out there that might do nefarious things to try and keep the price um, from going up, right? Don't don't expect that necessarily that this is a moment to break out, although right, it could be, which is terribly non-specific and non-committal. I know um, it it is it does raise an eyebrow here that Monero has dropped significantly to the tune of eleven percent, um, while everything else basically either was flat or went up. Um, but it is what it is, you know. Whatever, that, that's fine. Um, just another opportunity to maybe, maybe everybody's moving over to Darrow. Is, 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 oh, is obviously, is, bro. Please, it's not even a question. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, maybe, maybe that's changed this on. to Darrowtopia. Just change the name; it's over. <laughs> Since Monero's so traceable, that's and right. Darrow is is perfect. Yeah, they've got. There's still <laughs> Darrow shills out there. It's you know on Twitter, and they just like saying all this nonsense. I'm like, bro, come yeah. on, what's up with that? I, they follow me, Great. so I don't want to like, I don't know, I don't want to like crap on Darrow too badly, but it's also. Like, I know, I know. It's like, but it's so annoying. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys, like you're, you're getting crushed. Like your, your, your project has been completely destroyed. And then you're sitting here trying to throw, throw stones at Monero. It's like, what, what are you doing? Just be, I've always said this about them. If they could just be a little bit more open and honest about their project and like, like they would people might actually show some interest towards it, but their, their attitude is like, they just look like complete numbskulls. Well, if it was that, like, so there's a lot of them that are like that for sure. There's a few of them out there, like the Darrow shills that are also like very pro Monero and they engage in a positive manner. So it's like, like they talk about Darrow, like I'll read one of their posts. Right. And, um, and I'll be like, Oh, that's a good post. Uh, and then they're like, and also Darrow, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, I now I can't like the post. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> unlike, or I might have like liked it in the first half and then unlike the post <laughs> reading the second half. Yeah, there Kevin's saying that tech leak guy created the fun. Yeah, we had him on this show. I, I I recommend you go watch that one. It was it was amazing. Um yeah, tech leak blocked got, me. Or yeah, he yeah. He torn apart by Luke Parker. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember that. Holy yeah. crap. That was um that was brutal for him, yeah. obviously. <laughs> Yeah, this is the Darrow chart right here in front of us. They've they've also come down to the tune of, I, I guess, from the WIC. What are we on the daily? Yeah, so they've come down about 21%, but they actually had a nice bump here. Let's actually do XMR divided by Darrow. My, uh, I lost the, the E key on my keyboard, and I can't actually replace it. Hey, what the hell? Maybe I just can't look at this one. XMR USD divided by... Oh, I bet you Darrow isn't even on the crypto. <laughs> <laughs> Darrow's probably not even on the on the crypto list. Um, yeah, so we've been pumping against Darrow. A little bit of a drop here lately. 35%. Yeah, I mean, but Darrow, I mean, obviously it's moving massive percentages since um, you know, since basically since down here, right? This is XMR versus Darrow. So as this XMR is doing better than Darrow. Uh, obviously, that's from the Darrow crash or whatever. Um, all right, anyways, enough about Darrow. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to Monero here and see what we got with the 
Bitcoin to Monero ratio. Unfortunately, you know, obviously with Bitcoin pumping a little, uh, pumping would be a strong word. Bitcoin gently moving towards the upside, uh, and Monero gently moving towards the downside. Those two compounded kind of as a stump in the XMR USD ratio. Um, let's take a look here again. I'm not sure if you can see that, but this line right there is the very, very long term lower standard deviations. We are now below that. Okay, that, that's not great, but eh, I don't know if I believe that necessarily any of, that, <clears throat> any of that's real. Um, oh, you know, when we talk about nefarious people doing things to the price, we always talk about price divergences, although nothing to see here. This chart doesn't give us anything. Um, Polo is kind of a little bit more schizophrenic than everyone else, oscillating between minus one and a half and maybe plus one and a half percent relative to Kraken. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing to see there. Uh, but arrow versus gold. Yeah, we're going to look at a few charts versus gold today. Um, you know, since gold is the, the bell of the ball right now. Um, yeah, so Monero has had a little bit of a, a dip related to the gold price. Um, it's not huge, right? This is the weekly chart, so this is a long time frame. Um, but yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Gold's pumping, Monero's flat, so we've, we've got a little bit of a drop here. At this moment, this chart really, to me, feels like... This chart really feels to me like it wants to occupy this zone for a period of time. So I, I wouldn't necessarily expect Monero to take off relative to gold anytime soon. I might even expect um, expect it to drop some more. So, you know, with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the gold chart because um, because gold did break a very very long term resistance trend line. Now, when I say break, you know, be careful when I about that. I, I don't exactly mean that it's a confirmed break, but it definitely poked its head above this very very long term line. Let's go to the monthly. We looked at this last week. But this is, um, it's actually a very simple line. We have three connection points finally, um, but it's such an easy, easy, big, broad line to draw. So this is back from 1980. That's where we connect the first point. And then the 2011 blow off top for gold, we connect the next point, And then we have finally touched that again. So this basically constitutes a rising wedge formation. And this thing is going to break towards the upside. But as we've talked about so many times before, look at the dates down here. Right. That's this thing might take until the end of the decade to actually break above. I don't think it's necessarily going going to take that long, but from just the pure pattern of this chart, it could take until the end of the decade. Right. We could have five more years before this thing actually breaks, breaks out, um, truly, truly breaks out. However, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that um, there's a good chance um, that this thing. So notice this wick right here. We've already wicked. So the weekly close was right at the line, um, but the wick got above the line. We actually talked about this last week too. We said, hey, if this thing is going to be bullish and communicate a good chance of breaking sooner rather than later, expect to wick up, maybe for it to come back down, do this for a little bit, and then to break again. Um, or if it just continues with strength next week and kind of does this and then finds support down there, holy crap, that's the time to put a shitload of money into gold because, I mean, the thing's just going to... That, that kind of chart pattern is like a classic, you know, you break the thing with strength, you come back, you test it, sellers, whatever, and then and then you just you, you, you pounce to the upside. Um, so that could be in the cards for gold here. That that legitimately could be. Um, after that, my next eyeball area would be this purple line. And you'll notice this purple line. So again, um, this is like the standard deviation of <laughs> the moving standard deviation, which is uh, a bit of a mouthful. I like to call it standard deviation prime because it kind of mimics um, derivatives where you have like your derivative and your derivative prime. It's a concept I think I invented. I don't know. Maybe there's some math genius out there that did it before me decades ago, whatever. Um, please don't don't take that as me claiming to be a genius. <laughs> I got hit in the head way too much yesterday to consider myself a genius this morning, at least. Um, anyways, this purple line here um, is, is sloping towards the upside. So that would kind of be my next target. If we end up breaking that major line, then I would expect this chart to eventually make it to that that purple line. And that would be like a hardcore sell point for me. That would be like, all right, I love gold, but hey, I've, you know, smartly, I've got to do other things with my money that that makes sense um, than to hold it at such an obvious point. Obviously, you know, that'll be tempered against the background of whatever might be happening um, in the macro sense and the rest of the world if shit's going crazy. Um, you know, maybe I'll sell my gold and buy brass or lead or something. Um, that's always the currency of... <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not but if shit collapses right if shit crashes like brass and lead or the currency of the future hypothetically okay so yeah that's gold um so because it's been rising we're going to take a look at a few charts relative to gold uh like bitcoin so one thing that you might find interesting is that bitcoin has not actually made a new all-time high even though in dollars bitcoin did just barely make out a new all-time high um just above like 71 
Um, but in terms of gold, Bitcoin has not made a new all-time high, which is kind of unsurprising, right? There's been all the inflation, you know, so of course everything's making new all-time highs in dollar terms, but divide by gold, right? Because everyone that has a slightly libertarian leaning, except for the maximalists, realize that gold kind of is a stable asset over long periods of time um, with, you know, chop, lots of chop in between, even decades. Um, so yeah, uh, Bitcoin has actually been in kind of this downtrend here. You would, you would have wanted to try and call this a bull flag um back you know for some period of time um you know so you, you you make a big run to the top side and then you you sort of create this flag pattern uh and then expect to break again towards the top side maybe this is still a bullish flag pattern <clears throat> probably probably it is and at some point you know bitcoin is gonna receive once the liquidity expansion begins in earnest after the next crisis again we're targeting december that's just my that's my like crank theory. Um, we won't go over all of that again this week. It's there from last week's video if you want to like really hear the full version of it. But it makes a lot of sense to me. The the numbers, all of the indicators are starting to line up. It looks to me that um, you know December to February timeframe is really my target period for a big crisis to happen. Um, so once the liquidity expansion begins again in earnest, you would expect this chart to break to the upside, right? That's Bitcoin versus gold. Um, did I have anything else here? I think I had. Um, I think I had the S&P 500, but <clears throat> this chart doesn't exactly feel like the coolest, bestest, happiest chart in terms of gold, um, because you've, as you've seen since 2011, the S&P 500 has just vastly outperformed gold. However, this does look a lot like a very long-term bottoming pattern. These are monthly candles, so this bottoming pattern has been happening for like six years now. <laughs> so it's not like this means this is not a pattern that you're like, oh, hey, this is going to break to the top side here soon and even if it did soon would still constitute like a couple years so right that could still take time maybe there's some other kind of like massive major major like super crisis coming for us in like five years or ten years or something and then you know and then gold breaks out i don't know whatever that's just like joe jokingly speculation kind of stuff there um yeah let's go to the rest of the degenerate crypto market uh, yeah, we have XMR and the burnt dark red here has been dropping. Sadly, um, draw a sad face on that one. Everything else has been pumping quite a lot. Dog apparently is the winner today. Um, all praise to to Dog, to Shiba, whatever. Um, they're do do just doing good. Okay, whatever. Makes sense, you know. I mean, crypto is still kind of a meme. What are you gonna do? Um, let's see. Any other big winners here? Maybe. Maybe Ethereum, after doing kind of <laughs> being in the bottom of the range here from like relative to everybody, maybe Ethereum is, man, it's still kind of in the bottom of the range though. So. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, Z scores. Um, Bitcoin, in terms of US dollars now, is a bit of a happier chart than, than the gold, the uh, Bitcoin versus gold. Basically, trying to range back up here to the top, right? To the top of this area. Um, one thing that you really want to see, <clears throat> if you want to try and get bullish on, on Bitcoin here, you really want to see it get into this zone, right? See that zone right there? Let's zoom in a little bit on it. But um, the idea being that we're trying to draw our resistance lines in ways that are the most steep and the most shallow that we could. Right. So we'll connect the top there, and then we'll try and bring this one. I don't know. I mean, you're just eyeballing this stuff, right? So maybe we could do something like that. It's not quite right. Pro probably like that. Maybe that's about the most um, steep that we could draw the downslope there. And then the most shallow the way that we could draw it would look something probably, yeah, about like we have it drawn. See over here, we'll connect the, uh, the the body of the candle instead of the wick. Maybe we could go to the weekly and, and try and draw it even slightly different from that, right? Maybe we could, uh, maybe this thing could get drawn down here. I don't know, whatever. Like, this is why it's kind of like there's a little bit of bullshit involved when you're drawing lines, right? Just, just kind of be like, oh, well, how do I want to draw it today? I don't know. Let's change the candles. Let's, let's go down to the one hour. Oh, the one hour is, is the real one, bro. Anyways, um, but yeah, if you want to see, so we've got the most shallow and the most steep way we could draw it. If you want to get bullish on Bitcoin right now, you really want to see this guy get into this zone here, flirt with this zone, break one of the lower resistances, right? That gives you an indication that there's kind of like a bit of extra strength. That doesn't mean that that has to hold, right? It could it could fall out of that. Um, I, man, I don't have any opinions on this chart. I haven't really, really, really considered or scrutinized Bitcoin. I mean, I guess the direction's still up until the crisis actually hits. There's a decent chance that the direction is still up. That's what happened um, pre mm, pre medical crisis uh, back in 2020, uh, 2019, really 2019. Everything just like smashed to the upside, like crazy smash to the upside, like immediately before the crisis. So fraudulent, such a scam. Right now, Bitcoin is is languishing. Right, like if we go over here and take a look at the S and P 500, um, we can see like, the S and P 500 has made new all time highs two weeks in a row. 
Um, so yeah, S and P doing good here, and Bitcoin is sort of languishing behind. Um, maybe that's because tech stocks, like Bitcoin is. I always say Bitcoin is a tech stock on steroids, and so the S and P five hundred is is like having. Uh, sorry, the Nasdaq is, is having its own problems here, trying to get back to its all time high. Right, just it's not making it there. So maybe there's a little bit of risk aversion, right? Maybe the fact that the S and P five hundred is outperforming the Nasdaq is an indication of risk aversion. Now that would make a lot of sense to me. Um, in the sense that I think we're looking at a crisis coming up here um, sooner rather than later. We are now seeing in the bond market, the yield curve inversion has become fully uninverted for, man, I'll never remember this. The pink line is all of them? Or is the pink line, we got to go all the way back here. Monthly, let's go to the monthly. Uh, okay, yeah, the pink line is, is, is the oldest sort of tracking that we have of the yield curve inversion. Goes all the way back to 1962. Um, at least from the Fed now data. Is it Fed now? It's not Fed now. It, it, from the, the Federal Reserve data that they publish. Um, all right. Anyways, without getting bogged down in, in the gory details of that, um, what we can see here is that effectively uh, the yield curve is becoming uninverted, fully uninverted for like kind of part of it. And then the red line being sort of all of the yield, the different yields that they have, because they've added more of them over time, right? The one year, the two year, the five, 10, 20, 30 year, the three month, the six month. Right. These are things that they've added much later than 1962. So I add them all up and um, and this is what you get. This is what the chart shows you. Still slightly inverted, but obviously, I mean, this thing is now in an uptrend. This thing is ready to start moving towards the upside. It's already happening. And that, of course, is corroborated um, by the yields themselves are now falling. And this is the classic pattern as the yields start to fall and start to move towards the downside. Um, you're going to see the yield curve start to move the other direction. Okay, so yeah, that's bonds. That's again, that's another major, major piece that we look at here to give us an idea of broad macro risk. How close are we to the next crash? Um, you know, because effectively that's what the system does. It just vacillates between crash and liquidity expansion. Usually they throw a crisis and there's their excuse for why they had to expand the liquidity. Oh, it wasn't their fault. It's not a natural byproduct of the system. No, no, no. It's it's just this this super the super bug from China. Um, that was going to kill us all. All right. Uh, let's see it. Let's take a look at some of the comments here. Make sure we got uh, the super chats going on. Okay. We've got um, FD tipped. He said, Bowdy, ever look at chart of Coinbase app store position? Wondering if it's a good indicator that leads price. That is interesting. You know, I'm going to write that down actually. Let me just copy your comment here and paste that into my daily planner. Um, I, I have never looked at that, but that is a very interesting idea. Yeah. Taking a look at. Um, how, how many people are downloading their Coinbase app? Probably we could even aggregate, um, you know, across the, like maybe the top three popular exchanges. Um, I'll try and see if I can track that down this week. Or if you want to do that, contact me. And I would um, gladly show that uh, and give you full credit for it. Um, let's see, anything from from the tube, from the YouTube? tube? Mm, no, no. Oh, smash the like, obviously. Oh shit, I didn't smash the like. Hang on, let me, let me come here. All right, like smashed. Okay. Continuing onward, price report. Let's not uh, let's not bog down here. Okay, we looked at the stocks, whatever stocks, who cares? Um, <clears throat> uh, oil. Okay, normally we don't care too much about oil, but if you guys remember, we talked about oil, and I said, hey, you'll notice. So, for example, um, just going back to the pre last crash, you'll notice oil was just kind of like oscillating, you know, kind of like trending, whatever. And then notice this is January. Look at the date on the bottom. That is January sixth. Oil dropped out of its trend. Um, before the big market crash happened. So if we just consider that the general oil trend, you'll notice oil dropped out of its trend January 20th and then sort of like continued on down. And then it actually really, really started tanking on February 24th, 2020. Um, and that's a big candle down, right? Like that takes you effectively to that, to your last place down there. Um, and then obviously uh, March 2nd was when like the big crash began in earnest for the rest of the markets. But this this is a pattern that, that that goes back a little bit further and so right here that breakdown is significant for us right if we want to go over here and we want to kind of do the same thing and say hey where are we breaking down are we breaking down to me right here this trend line has been intact since 2021 right this is a three-year trend line um that has effectively supported the the oil price for a long time we broke that down now there has been some oscillation price you know gold did kind of try and like get above that but it was stopped out and has come back to the downside now um if this would be like a, this is a four, how can I put this? In my mind, when I'm trying to, to validate whether my thesis is correct or incorrect, I want to say things ahead of time that I expect to happen 
and then see if those things happen. I don't want to like after the fact be like, oh, this happened. Um, and yeah, that totally validates my thesis now. Ha. Huh. Right. Because you can just find anything. So right here on camera today, um, well, maybe off camera, but on microphone, uh, I would say that if this I would like to see this thing <clears throat> to validate my thesis, I would want to see more candles happening towards the downside here on the oil price. Right. I want to see this thing start getting into this zone right there. Um, going into uh, going into November, December. If we see oil coming into this into into that area, that is a very clear sign to us that we are on progression for another big tail risk event. Um, you know, a big a big market crash. And again, just just to recap for those of you that might not have seen that the first time that we did it, tail risk. When we say tail risk, it's basically a probability distribution. So if what we have here is a, basically a bell curve, right? So the market is going to occupy, like, let's just take every single day in the market and we say, okay, does, is every single day negative? So right on the left side here, this is going to be negative price action on the, on the right side, that's going to be positive price action. So you're going to say, okay, where, what happens with the market usually? Well, usually the market stays in this zone, right? Like two out of three times, uh, two thirds of the time, you're going to stay within one standard deviation, right? So you might have a little bit negative, you might have a little bit positive. The, the reality is that the market goes up. So there's actually a skew to all this. <laughs> so reality is probably something closer to this. Um, right? So we have more positive days than negative days. But anyways, the point is that the likelihood, like we have so few days where the market is like just crashing, right? Down here, this would be like crash territory. So we call it tail risk because this is the tail of this whole of the of the price curve of, of how price unfolds, um, and and like just the big the finance bros call it tail risk because it's sort of the, the statistically appropriate way of of calling it. So yeah, when we say tail risk, that's what I mean. Um, but we don't need to get uh, we don't need to to dally on that too long. But again, the the idea is that if oil is dropping down into this range. That's I'm saying like ahead of time, if we see that, that's a that's a signal to us that, yes, they're, they're, the crash is probably like progressing towards us um, sooner rather than later. Um, let's see here. Reverse repos. Um, yeah, so reverse repos have been climbing, actually, and this is a pretty strong climb. This isn't just like a spike and back down that we've seen before um, on these reverse repos. This is actually strength in, in terms of like how this this trend has played out over the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, that makes sense to me because, again, crash thesis here, crash thesis hat on. If you're a big finance bro, if you're Warren Buffett or whoever, by the way, Warren Buffett sold a shitload of his stocks, like something like billions of stocks. Um, like he never does that and he's in cash now. Um, but if you're trying to protect yourself against risk, what do you do? You go into bonds, right? Because bonds give you the guaranteed yield because the government can just print the money to pay the interest that they owe you on the yield. So it's like governments will basically never default on their bonds. So if people are trying to guard against risk, what are they going to do? They're going to put money into the reverse repos because the reverse repo is effectively a government bond. It's it's similar to a government bond. It's more like a Federal Reserve bond, if you will. You park money with the Federal Reserve overnight, um, and you get a you get the federal funds rate for doing so, right? So uh, high liquid money that you're getting the federal funds rate at, like damn, like that's that's pretty good. So um, yeah, that makes sense that the reverse repos would continue to rise. Um, uh, to yeah, I mean, just in, in, the, in the broader context of, of bonds. And again, um, we've talked about this before, going back to the bond chart. The reason that bonds, the, the rates of bonds fall as people buy them, as there is demand for the bond that you're offering, and everybody wants, um, everybody wants to buy it, you're like, hey, I want to pay you as low a percentage as I can, right? If I'm the bond issuer, I don't want to pay you a high percentage. I want to pay you a low percentage. But if no one wants my bond, I have to attract people with a higher percentage rate. But if everybody wants my bonds, I start lowering my rates. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't gotta, I don't have to give you a high percentage. I'll just go to the next guy. I've got another person that wants to buy ten billion dollars worth of my bonds, whatever. So it causes rates of bonds to go down as people buy them, right? So that means that th this drop here means that there is demand for bonds, and that is probably a causal mechanism of why we see market crashes because the big money gets into bonds and then the markets are sort of like topping out. Um, and then all of that liquidity has gone into bonds and is now no longer in the stock market. And then once the plebs get like, start realizing, Oh crap, the crash is here, they sell. And then there's just no liquidity and then the market just crashes. So, um, yeah, that's why that's another reason we look at bonds. I know they're boring. Um, <laughs> but we just got to keep an eye on it, right? Week by week, we just got to make sure that we're not going to miss that because that is maximum, maximum opportunity. Um, 
I don't think I have anything else for you guys today. Maybe let's just check here really quick, make sure I haven't missed anything. No comments. Um, no, no XMR chat comments. Um, I guess we could look at Golden Dixie, but yeah, I don't really see a reason to do that particularly right now. Yeah, I guess that's good enough for one day, guys. Hopefully, um, hopefully you got some ideas. Hopefully, the DGens and the long-term investors alike got some good things from today's price report. If you have any questions ever, hit me up, especially um, if you got something you want me to like dive into. Um, I think next week we'll look at Bitcoin. We'll do the Bitcoin versus gold regression. I didn't have time to get to, to that this week, but someone asked me if I could um, if I could do the Bitcoin versus gold regression analysis, uh, which I had done like months and months ago, um, but I just didn't have time to get to it this week. So uh, we'll do that next week. If you have anything else you want me to take a look at, you know, just hit me up, send me a message. I'm on Twitter. Um, I, I'm on Telegram. You got, you got well. people asking for a, a Zano price update. I don't know uh, oh, what's okay. been going on with Zana. Has that been? Zana's good. Zana's been at the top. Let me. Uh, where is my? Here we are. Yeah, Zana's good. Zana actually. Um, so after a pullback here, it's it's trying to get back to the top side. Um, yeah, I mean that's good price action, right? This is this is price action that's that's now consolidating after a big move to the top side, and I like that. I like that the previous all time high became the became the support after breaking that all time high. This is the kind of chart you'd be optimistic on. You again, you, you don't know if this thing might end up ranging. A lot's going to depend on what happens with the rest of the market. But if the rest of the market goes to the top side, Xano's probably going to the top side too. So yeah, if you've got a bullish thesis for the short term, um, then Xano would be would be a project you could put some cash into for sure. All right, guys, tell me chat. Do we ban this person? Hello, I draw your attention to this project. Blender Network has the potential to reach seventy-five dollars. Then don't say you weren't warned. What should we do with this person, guys? Warning: <laughs> Blender going to the moon. Don't, I mean, let, let them continue later. to to shill. I guess it's, it's, is it being disruptive? Are they tweeting non? Uh, commenting no, non -stop? just like a spam yeah, comment. Just, Figured we could have a little game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Max Still. Max M says ban. Hmm. Oh, Fox Quite says ban. Oh. <laughs> no, no, don't ban. Only if he becomes um obnoxious, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Everyone here is gonna run by Blender. It's I bet, I bet it's not even that I'm not <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Principle. Even just out of principle, I'm not gonna look it up, but I bet it's not even on the chart. Like I bet we couldn't even find it if we if we tried to look for it. You'd probably have to go to like dexscreener.io or something. You know, one of like the DGen platforms where like soul tokens are traded. <laughs> Blender, Blender though. Maybe it's like a mixing chain. Maybe it's a new privacy coin. Is that it? Like, wait, if I if I heard of uh, no, dude, like there's uh, no, I think I was thinking of something else. Man, maybe there's gonna be like a whole like. So I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting the feeling that this next liquidity expansion is is gonna see a lot of privacy coin attention. Right. We're going to we're going to because it's already out there, like all of the work, all of all of that groundwork has been paved.